Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in this series of videos we are working on the assigned homework problems from the digital study guide for chapter 12 the group B problems. Note accounting is about understanding the concepts and then applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else work the problem. However if you don't understand the concepts that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help if you don't understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text material again and watch the theory videos. If you still don't understand the concepts, then either email or telephone an instructor to get help with that understanding. All right, so we were working on uh, 39. Yeah, let's see here. It says current debt and earnings per share. So this is data. Um, number one, compute the current ratio, debt ratio, and earnings per share. Assume the company had no preferred stock outstanding. Round all ratios to two decimal places. And it says, compute each of the same three ratios, evaluating the effect of each independent transaction that follows. Okay, so let's do number one first. All right, so we're going to do the current ratio. We know the current ratio is equal to current assets over current liabilities. So our current assets go all the way down to here. So we have current assets of 17,000, 22,000, 103,000, 119, and 10,000. So that's 9, and 12 is 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2. Let me double check that again. That's 9, 12, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 21. And for current liabilities, we have um, 45, 105, and 40. So 45, 105, and 40. That's 10, 8, 9, 190. So 271 divided by 190 is equal to 1.43. So it's 1.43. Right, pause the video because I'm going to erase this. Okay. So then our debt ratio is equal to um, the total liabilities over total assets. So my total liabilities are the 45, 105, 40, 157, and 34. So that's 45. 105, 40, 157, and 34. So that's 10, 21, 2, 6, 10, 18, 380, 300, and 81,000. And our total assets are 660. So I take 381,000 divided by 660,000 and you end up with 57.73%. Okay, that's 57.73%. All right, pause the video because I'm going to erase this. Okay, and last is our earnings per share. So earnings per share is equal to our net income and that's divided by the number of average number of common stock shares outstanding and so in this case here our net income is 75,400 and the number of shares is 35,000 and that ends up being uh, 2.15 for earnings per share. Okay, pause the video. Okay, so now 
um, it says compute each of the same three ratios after evaluating the effect of each independent transaction that follows. All right, so what this means is um, we look at the transaction, we compute all of the ratios, look at the transaction, compute the ratios, look at the transaction, compute the ratios. All right, so our purchased merchandise of 26,000 on account debiting inventory. So if our inventory was 119, and we're increasing it by, um, well, maybe I should do it like this. Um, and I'm going to increase it by 26,000, okay? Um, and we're purchasing it on account. So our accounts payable is going to increase 26,000. And if our um, inventory increases by 26,000, then our total assets increases by 26,000. Okay? All right, so now when we do the ratios, our current assets are 17, 22, 103, and 119 plus 26 is 145,000, and then 10. So let's see here, that's 9, that's 10, 17, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 297,000, and our current liabilities are the 45,000, um, 105 plus 26 is 131, and 40,000, so that gives us 6, 8, 11, 316,000. So we have, wait a minute, no, nope, I did this wrong. Let's see, 17, 22, 103, 145, and 10. So it's 9, 12, 17, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, all right, 297,000. Okay, and then, oh, not 216. 316, 216. There's where my math was wrong, right there. Sorry about that. So I've got 6, 8, 11, 216,000, not 316. Right. And so 297 divided by 216, and that gives me um, 1.38. So um, pause the video. I'm going to make that. Um, uh, so that's the current ratio for A here, all right? So pause the video. Okay. I'm not going to create a table. Um, I'm just work. I'm just going to work out the, the the figures themselves, right? So for our debt ratio, we have our total liabilities, right? So our total liabilities are going to be the short-term notes payable of 45,000. The 105 plus 26 is 131,000. Um, the 40,000. Um, 157 for our long-term. And the additional 34 for the other long-term. So that's 6, and 11 is 17, 5, 8, 12, 22, 4, 407,000. And that is all divided by our total assets, which are 660 plus 26, or 686. So we're dividing 407,000 by 686,000, and that gives us 59 0.33%. Right, pause the video. I'm going to erase this. Right. Next is our debt ratio. I'm sorry, our earnings per share. And our earnings per share, since we didn't affect net income or the shares outstanding, it's still the same as the 2.15%.
I mean, 2.15 2 earnings per share. And so I don't have to calculate that one out. All right, now, the we're going to issue 4,000 shares. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat this. Right, we had it when we did this, we changed the numbers here. Okay, and because we changed assets and liabilities, we all that means we had different figures for our current ratio and our debt ratio. However, since we didn't affect the 74,000 or 35,000, our earnings per share stayed the same at 2.15 earnings per share. So that was what happened, the net effect of, of letter A there. All right, so now we're going to move on to B. And with B, it says we're going to issue 4,000 shares of common stock. So our common stock is going to go up to uh, an additional 4,000 or 39,000. And we're receiving $44,000 in cash. So our cash is going to go up by 44,000. Right, 44,000. Okay. Now we go back and we do the ratio. So our, uh, our current assets, we're going to do the current ratio. 17 and 44 is 61. And then we have the 22. We have the 103. We have the um, okay, before I go any further, we're only looking at just each transaction, so these are no longer in effect, okay? We're not adding the 26. It's not like these are journal entries and um, we're increasing the balances in these accounts. Now, what we're doing is we're looking at one transaction, looking at the effect on these balances. The previous transaction is not applicable because these are independent transactions, okay? Independent transactions. All right, so we're only looking at one transaction at a time, right? So we're at 103, and then we have 119, and the 10,000. Okay, so that's 3, 6, 15, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's 315,000 for our current assets and our current liabilities are going to be the 45,000, the 105,000 and the uh, 40,000. It's 10, 8, 9. So 315,000 divided by 190,000 is equal to 1.66. Okay, so that's our current ratio um, for B here is 1.66. Let me pause the video because I'm going to erase it. All right, now for our debt ratio. Um, our debt ratio is going to be our total liabilities, which are the 45,000, the 105, 40, 157, and 34. Um, so that's 10, uh, 21, 2, 6, 10, 8, 381,000. And for our total assets, Right now, our total assets, uh, our, we increased our cash by 44,000. So that increased our total assets by 44,000. Okay, so our total assets are going to be the 660,000 plus the 44,000, which is 4, 10, 704,000. So 381 for our debt ratio divided by 704. And that gives me a 54.12% right, as our debt ratio. Right. So pause the video because I'm going to erase that. And lastly, our earnings per share is our net income here of uh, 75,400 
divide it by our number of shares. In this case here, it's 35,000 plus 4,000 or 39,000. And that gives me an earnings per share of 1.93 is my EPS. Okay, pause the video. I'm going to erase that. Okay, I'm going to erase these because they're no longer applicable. All right, and then we're going to borrow 75,000 on a long-term note payable. So if we're gonna borrow on a long-term note payable, we're gonna increase our long-term note payable by 75,000. And since we're borrowing, we're increasing our cash by 75,000. And that also increases our assets by 75,000. So for our current uh, current ratio, our current assets are 17 plus 75 is 92,000 for our cash, 22,000, 103, 119, and 10. 2, 4, and 12 is 16, 10, 14, 346,000. And our current liabilities are the 45,000, uh, the 105, and the 40,000, which gives us 10, 8, 9, 190,000. So 346,000 divided by 190,000 is equal to 1.8. Eight, two. Okay, so pause the video because I'm going to erase that. Um, our debt ratio. So our total liabilities. Um, are going to start out at the 45,000, 105, 40, and 157 plus 75,000 is 232,000 and 34. So I've got 10, 16, that's 5, 9, and 6 is 15. That's four, 456,000 for our total liabilities. And our total assets are the 660 plus the 75, which is five, three, 735,000. So 456,000 divided by 735,000 is 62.04%. Okay, so pause the video. I'm going to erase that. This is just a lot of number crunching, right? I mean, if you know where the numbers are coming from, okay, and you can just, uh, you know, kind of like take the shortcuts. In other words, I mean, obviously I don't have space, so I'm reworking everything out, okay? But like here, now I'm going to do the earnings per share, and since my earnings per share didn't change, you know, from up here in number one, I knew my earnings per share was 2.15, well, it's gonna be the same 2.15, so I don't need to rework that. So if you were reworking these num these figures, I mean, if you worked out number one here, okay, um, you know, as working papers, um, all I would be doing is I would have worked out the current, I would have worked out the current ratio, the debt ratio, and earnings per share for number one. And then as each one of, as I made changes for A, and then made changes for B, okay, um, and I made changes for C and D, well, each time when I make that change, all I would do is I would, since I'd have all of those figures anyway, all I would do is just make the adjustments um, from all of that work, you know, adding in the additional amounts were applicable and then just recalculating the totals. But since I don't have that space, um, I'm actually working out everything again. So just realize that it would probably take me a lot less time to do this 
once I had did all of the work for number one. Okay. All right, so then we're going to receive cash on account of 18,000. So our cash is going to increase by 18. Our accounts receivable is going to decrease okay, by 18 because we're paying it on account. Right? And of course, the net effect on our total assets stays the same. Right? There is no change in, in the assets. Right? So for our current ratio, of my current assets of 35,000, 17 plus 18 is 35,000. All right, my 22,000. Then I have 103 less the 18, which would give me 85, 119, and 10,000. So let's see here, the math there is 10, 21, 2, 5, 15, 16, 17, 271,000. And now you see how, you know, if I had the, when I had done the work here for number one, my current assets stay the same. All I did was just move the, you know, I changed the amounts. I increased my cash here. I decreased my um, accounts receivable here. Knowing that once I had done all of the work for number one here, I would know that my current assets are 271,000. Okay. And I would know that my current liabilities um, would have stayed the same at 45,000 plus the 105 plus the 40. Right. And that would give me 10, 9, 190,000. And, you know, that's my current liability stayed the same. So my initial figure up here for my current ratio would have been 1.43. So that was not going to change whatsoever. Okay. Um, because I take 271 and divide it by 190. Gives me the same 143,000. Okay. So... You see where I'm, uh, how I would have saved time and energy, right? And we also know that my debt ratio was 57.73, and my earnings per share was 2.15. Well, because um, all I'm doing is affecting the cash and the accounts receivable here, then these two ratios are still going to stay the same. So I don't actually have to calculate those out because I already calculated those out for number one. All right. So um, that's it for this video. Um, it did take, you know, 22 minutes, um, but it could have been it could have been done a lot quicker. But I decided to work out some of that. And as I as we got more into take, being able to take the shortcut because I'm doing my working papers, as long as I had worked out number one, then all I needed to do was just, you know, uh, make the changes to the net effects of the numbers. Um, and then just do my totaling. But like you see in for number C here, you know, really I don't have to do anything. I, I didn't actually have, knowing that, you know, I'm increasing my cash and decreasing my accounts receivable. If I understand the concepts of what my, you know, the total of my current assets is going to be for my current ratio and my current liabilities, then I know that all three of these here um, ratios are not going to change at all because there was no change in the net effect. Okay. So with that said, if you didn't understand something, you know, go back and watch the theory videos um, uh, for, you know, uh, the each and every, at the end of each chapter that pertain to the particular ratios um, or the theory videos for this chapter. And then watch me rework the numbers again, because I kind of like did work out the numbers, you know, work out that information. Um, when in reality, I could have taken a few more shortcuts. And if you still don't understand something, feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor. Okay, see you in the next video.